and I'm joined today by Elon Musk, Zachary Kirkhorn, and a number of other executives. Uh, thank you, Martin. So just as a, as a Q2 recap, uh, Q2 was a unique quarter for Tesla due to a prolonged shutdown of our Shanghai factory. But in spite of all these challenges, it was one of the strongest quarters in our history. Most importantly, in June, we achieved production records in both Fremont and Shanghai. And as a result, we have the potential uh, for a record-breaking second half of the year. So uh, also uh, making good progress uh, with production ramp uh, with Berlin. We achieved an important milestone of 1,000 cars a week in June, um, and we're expecting uh, so our, our Giga Texas um, to, to exceed uh, the 1,000 vehicle per week milestone in hopefully in the next few months. But uh, it, it is worth emphasizing that we have enough 2170 cells to, uh, to satisfy uh, oil vehicle production for the remainder of the year. So we're not dependent on 4680. Uh, that said, we have installed the second generation of manufacturing equipment for 4680 cells in Texas. And, um, and even at our established factories like Fremont and Shanghai, we continue to expand capacity. Uh, regarding autopilot, we have now deployed uh, FSD beta with city streets driving capability to over 100,000 owners. We've now driven over 35 million miles with FSD beta. With regard to manufacturing and technology, about uh, five or six years ago, we said we wanted to become the, the, the best manufacturer in the world. Um, and that that is somewhat counterintuitively uh, to, to some people, uh, what will actually be, I think, our strongest competitive advantage. Uh, we reduced body welding robot count by 70% per unit of capacity in uh, Austin and Berlin. Uh, so that's, um, you know, we, we call it roughly uh, a body shop that is th roughly three times smaller than would, no would normally be the case. Um, and I should say it's also lighter, uh, cheaper, and has uh, superior noise vibration and harshness. Uh, but this journey is not over. We'll uh, bring a whole, uh, another level of uh, simplicity and uh, manufacturing improvements with Cybertruck uh, and future products that we're not quite ready to talk about now, but I think will be very exciting to unveil in the future. Um, our safety team also introduced a feature that tensions seatbelts if the vision system detects imminent collision, uh, which has never been done before. But because we have vision, we can actually see that a collision is about to occur uh, with 100% probability before it actually happens. Um, and so we can tension the seatbelts um, and we can even adjust the, uh, the airbag deployment uh, because we, we can see, not just feel. Um, this is a, a fundamental safety advantage that Teslas uh, are now able to offer. Um, our team continues to focus on Cybertruck production readiness um, and some future platform design. Uh, we are expecting to be, uh, still, still expecting to be in production with the Cybertruck in the middle of next year. And uh, we're very, very excited about that product. I think it might. It might actually be our best product ever. Uh, let's see. Uh, and FSD beta is on track to be released for all of North American customers before the end of this year. Um, and hopefully, it, if we get regulatory approval, we'll also be releasing it uh, hopefully in Europe and some other parts of the world. Uh, we're hosting our AI day in a few months. I think people will be amazed at what we're able to show off in, in AI day. So it, it basically, it, it, <clears throat> there's a, a tremendous amount to look forward to in the second half of this year. And I want to thank all of our employees and suppliers for their super hard work during these challenging times. Thank you very much. And Zach has some opening remarks as well. Um, I want to start by congratulating the Tesla team on excellent execution during the second quarter. Although our production volume reduced sequentially due to COVID-related shutdowns in Shanghai, we made substantial progress in nearly every area of the business. And in particular, our global vehicle production rate as we exited the quarter. Our Fremont factory, supported by our Reno team, reached new production records. The Shanghai factory resumed full production, and our new factories in Austin and Berlin are progressing well through their initial ramps. Additionally, our energy business achieved record gross profit with the highest solar volumes in many years. On GAAP automotive gross margin, it declined sequentially to 27.9%. Temporary decline in Shanghai production volume meaningfully impacted margin, including idle capacity and factory restart costs, and also had implications on the mix of regional deliveries. Additionally, as discussed on previous calls, we are working through the ramp inefficiencies of our new factories. 
which are progressing well, but have had an impact on margin as those factories come online. While we continue to see a benefit from higher pricing flowing through, which experienced some foreign exchange related headwinds, our cost structure continues to experience cost increases from inflation, commodities, and logistics. Within operating expenses, Austin and Berlin related startup costs have wound down as these factories have moved into production and their costs are now reflected in automotive COGS. Additionally, we converted a majority of our Bitcoin holdings to fiat for a realized gain, offset by impairment charges on the remainder of our holdings, netting a $106 million cost to the PL included within restructuring and other. Yeah, actually, it should be mentioned that um, the reason we uh, sold uh, a a bunch of Bitcoin holdings was that we were uncertain as to when the uh, COVID uh, lockdowns in China would alleviate. Uh, so it was important for us to maximize our cash position, uh, given the uncertainty of the COVID lockdowns in, in China. Um, uh, we are certainly open to uh, increasing our Bitcoin holdings in future. Um, so this should not be taken as some uh, verdict on Bitcoin. Uh, it's just that uh, uh, we were concerned about overall liquidity for the company given COVID shutdowns in China, and we have not sold any of our Dogecoin. Um, our free cash flows were impacted by working capital related to the Shanghai factory shutdown. However, we expect this will show as a benefit in Q3 as our working capital related cash flows restabilize. As we look ahead, and as Elon mentioned, we are positioned for a record breaking second half of the year. Uh, we are quite excited about this. A couple of things to keep in mind as we progress. Austin and Berlin ramp inefficiencies will continue to weigh on our margins for the balance of the year. However, the impact should reduce as we increase ramp. Second, as we've mentioned before, we expect to continue to see recognized global pricing to increase uh, as our backlog flows through. However, macroeconomic related cost increases will also continue to be part of our story. And finally, despite losing more builds in Q3 than expected, we're still pushing to reach 50% growth this year. This target has become more difficult, but it remains possible with strong execution. And as Elon mentioned, uh, no more force majeure events for the balance yeah. of the year. A lot of force majeure in the last uh, several years. Thank you very much. And now let's go to the uh, questions from investors. Chinese EV manufacturers seem to be doing a better job than their Western compet competitors, excluding Tesla, at innovating in software and design. How can Tesla make sure the company is staying ahead of those manufacturers, both within China and outside of China? Right now, the, the best uh, Chinese EV manufacturer is Tesla China. Um, we are we're actually doing the best thanks to our incredible team in China. Um, but I have a lot of respect for the uh, Chinese uh, car manufacturers and EV manufacturers in particular. I think they will be a force to be reckoned with uh, worldwide. When will Tesla have a unified vector space for both static and moving object network? Will this be a, a V11 or later version? If the latter, can you explain what makes it a difficult problem in layman terms? This, this, uh, this answer will be understood by 0.001% of, of the audience, I think. Um, most people don't know what a unified vector space would, would actually mean. It essentially would be um, if you uh, can take uh, if, if instead of knitting together static and dynamic objects in C++, uh, if they can be knit together at the neural net level, then uh, you, you don't need to reconcile them within C++ heuristics. Uh, that, is, that, that is an architecturally better way uh, to, uh, that's, 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 the most, that's the most desirable outcome. Um, uh, it's. It, I think it's. Well, it, it, it's probably not necessary to achieve full self-driving, but it would be a slight improvement in the efficiency of the self-driving. Elon recently tweeted about lowering prices once inflation cools down. Can you elaborate on what do you mean by cooling down and how aggressively the company will lower prices? More broadly, how do you think about the auto pricing long term? There's there's a quite a long wait when somebody orders their car. Uh, in some cases, it's like six six months. In some cases, it could be up to a year. We have to anticipate what the probable inflation rate is over that period of time. When and or if we see indications that the inflation rate is declining, then uh, we would not need to increase our car prices. It's possible that there could be a slight decrease in in, in car prices, but this is fundamentally de dependent on you know macroeconomic inflation 
uh, it's not something we control. Uh, the next question is, uh, you made the right economic call before most on inflation when you diversified into Bitcoin. It has since shown it's not much of a hedge in the real world test uh, the last in the last few months. How do you think about it as an asset over long term? And what do you need to see to change your view? Well, you know, Tesla is uh, Tesla's goal is to accelerate the advent of sustainable energy. Um, uh, you know, we're we're not really uh, crypt cryptocurrency is a a, a sideshow to the sideshow. Um, <laughs> so it's it, you know we're not a uh, cryptocurrency is not something we think about a lot. Uh, we think a lot about uh, scaling production um, and accelerating the advent of sustainable energy. Elon noted that 4680 plus structural pack is not yet optimized. Can you please share the general path of 4680 and structural packs in terms of cost efficiencies and compared to the traditional 2170 pack? Yeah, and and, yeah. and we've gained the perspective through putting our first structural pack in production that that it is actually the A architecture. Yeah, like before we did that, it was a hypothesis that was backed with a, got a lot of modeling and first principles analysis, but now we've actually built it and are more confident in that assertion. And on cost improvements, are they due to scale or uh, about solving technical issues? Yeah, I mean, but really, the, the the two things that that improve cost are economies of scale and tech and and uh, and core and core technology. Thank so. you. Uh, the next question is: How do you feel the progress of FSD is going, and does Andrei Karpaty's leaving have any significant impact on timelines or potential progress? Um, but we've got a team of. Um, about 120 people in our uh, software AI group uh, that are extremely talented. And um, I think we will uh, have, uh, I'm highly confident we will solve uh, full self-driving and it still seems to be this year. Uh, uh, the next question is, how is the 46, uh, 4680 ramp going and is Giga Texas producing cells yet? Yeah, so we are making progress on 4680, but uh, right now, as Elon mentioned, we are leveraging supplier cells, which we have in sufficient quantity to ramp Texas and Berlin. Um, we expect to ramp total 4680 production to exceed 1K per week by the end of the year, hopefully before, um, well before. Um, in Q2 at Cato, we fully automated powder conveyance for the dry anode electrode um, tool there, unlocking major increases in production and improvements in yields. Uh, since March, because of that, Cato output has grown uh, 35% uh, month over month each month since, um, and yields throughout the factory are um, already at targets in most areas and trending in that direction in, in a few others. Our target for Texas is to begin production this quarter and uh, aim for Texas to be uh, capable of exceeding Cato weekly output for the end of this year. Uh, Tesla procures about 1,600 unique pieces of silicon from 43 semiconductor companies. So with a portf portfolio of that size, there are always challenges. Um, things are more stable on the latest generation chips. We still see some tightness in the older generation semiconductors, especially in the analog and mixed signal space. But we have a line of sight to solve for the volumes being contemplated for both Austin and Berlin. And on the cell front, like Elon mentioned, we have a comfortable margin thanks to record output from our partners and have line of sight that matches the planned output from both factories. Let me try to provide like a super straightforward answer. Like as Elon mentioned before, you know, our priority was really on simplicity and scale during the initial 4680 and structural battery ramps. So we, we weren't like putting all the bells and whistles in from day one, uh, because if so, we would be sort of suffering under um, a, ser a, a string of series miracles that we would need to achieve to, to get going. Um, but you know, as we attain the manufacturing goals that we've stated, you know, hit the ramp that we need to hit next year, we, we are certainly planning to layer in new material technologies uh, and higher range structural packs. Like we're not, we're not like holding back goodies for, for some, you know, rainy day or something like that. We, we do see uh, constraints in um, refining of the materials necessary for uh, with the amount of batteries, I, I do want to emphasize this is it is not due to a scarcity of the raw material, but 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 refining of the lithium uh, into ultra high purity battery grade lithium hydroxide and lithium carbonate is uh, quite difficult and requires a massive amount of machinery and it's it's a, it's a hard hard thing to scale. Maybe just two things to add, you know, specifically on your question, are we seeing a macroeconomic impact on our demand? 
Not that I can tell. Well, I mean, we, we you know, I, th I think we've got a good chance of, of exiting this year at 40,000 vehicles a week. Yeah, I mean, our, our internal plans are to have the capacity utilized by the end of the year. Uh, it takes time to ramp there. Um, it'll be a challenge. There's a lot that needs to happen to get there. But that's, that's what we're working on. We will increase the, the price of FSD sometime later this year, probably just before we go to wide beta. Where wide beta is, you know, any, anyone who, who wants to, to use the beta software with all the caveats associated with that can use it. Um, then it would make sense to increase the price of FSD. You know, I mean, I think we've said this now for, for many years, and it is proven true. Uh, Tesla does not have a demand problem. We have a production problem. And we've, we've pretty much almost always had it with, you know, with very rare exception. It's always been a production problem. I, I think that will remain the case. You know, I'll be on the call, you know, if, relatively speaking, there's bad news. And if, if all we have is good news, then I won't be on the call. <laughs> um, well, I don't, I don't want to steal thunder from AI Day. Um, so I think we'll have some exciting news on AI Day. I think Tesla is as much a software company as it is a hardware company. And, and so one of the ways that we've been able to address supply chain issues on, on the chip front um, is, is by rewriting our software to be able to use different chips, uh, or in some cases, achieve dual use of a single chip. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate all of your questions. Unfortunately, this is all the time we have this quarter, and we will speak to you again in three months' time. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Okay.